Okay, hi, I'm gonna get started here. Um, so um, we are starting um, our week 11 here. So we've, you've, last week and this week, we're looking at memory management, right? So this is our second week. You've, you've got your um, problem set due this week and our program assignment for due next week. Um, I thought I might go over the program assignment. I just wanted to remind people that uh, um, you know I am doing these help sessions. Um, I try to make certain that they're open every day. So if, if you need, you know, to, to contact me face to face over video anyway, but um, kind of in real time, um, um, feel free to come by and ask questions and things. Um, so let's see here. I, I wanted to, um, I, I just wanted to remind about the help sessions. I'm going to post that on here. Um, so, I mean, hopefully everybody's been, the, has been finding some of the videos uh, useful um, each week. Um, so I know it'd be really useful for you to go through the, the page replacement videos because our program assignment, um, uh, I, I discussed a little bit, made a kind of a previous version of the page replacement simulation, but, but I also go over by hand, um, you know, doing FIFO and, and uh, which recently used um, uh, page replacement algorithms and things. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, definitely that'd be of use. And, and I also have a kind of a big lecture on, on virtual memory, um, you know, which you definitely should uh, take uh, uh, a look at, you know, make certain that you, you look at that. So. Um, the, the problem set this four, uh, th this week, problem set four, I, I ask you to do uh, some page replacements by hand. So, you know, again, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll want to know how to do that, hopefully from watching the videos and things. So. Uh, but I did want to get started discussing about the program assignment four maybe a bit. So, so let's look at that as usual, um, just a few hints to get you started. Most people at this point um, have kind of gotten used to the system and, and um, how you submit things and stuff like that. So for the first fourth one, like I said, we're gonna be doing a page replacement scheme. Um, so, so uh, we're working on a page replacement uh, simulator. Um, so just a second, I uh, got to check something here, no pause. Oops. Okay, I'm um, sorry about that. So um, as I was saying, um, I wanted to mention one or two things about our assignment, program assignment four this week here. Um, so as usual, you've got a set of tasks that you have to complete. Um, and these, these first ones are all in the, um, um, the, the, the page replacement simulator, okay? So, so these, these first four tasks um, uh, are the paging system class. Let me check that out there. So we've got these named um, um, We've got a couple of schemes here that I'm going to talk about, but um, uh, in particular, you're going to be starting off in the paging system. Uh, HPP and CPP. So, so your first set of tasks, you're going to be implementing um, the, 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 the missing functions, member functions that are um, mentioned uh, here in, in the paging system. So, um, So some of these. So this includes um, starting off by implementing the get memory size, the get system time, the get number of page references. Okay. So I hope at this point um, most people are relatively familiar. You know, so so these work as um, 
um, variables that are part of the paging system class, you know, so, so, so these first getter methods that you're supposed to do is a bit of a warm up, you know, you just have to re uh, return the appropriate value, like the, the memory size, um, um, the system time, uh, number of page references, uh, things like that. Okay. Um, and then, and then, you know, they get a little bit harder after that. So you have to implement the is memory full, um, and then the is page hit. Okay. So here, you know, we, we, the, the, the paging system, the simulator in this case keeps track of a simulated memory. Um, and, and, and really all it's keeping track for doing page replacement is, whether uh, um, a um, block of memory is currently occupied or not. And if it is occupied, which page number um, is currently loaded into that memory, right? So uh, the, an important part of page replacement is if there's a new reference, you need to be, be able to answer the question, um, is it a hit or not? And hit means, is it already in loaded in memory? So is that particular page currently um, in a physical frame of memory or not. And if it is, that's a hit. If it's not, um, then that's a miss, right? So is page hit is just supposed to be given a true or false um, answer. Um, so, you know, given what the current system time is, you've got a, what was known as a page reference stream. So this is loaded for you from the, the simulations, okay? So uh, maybe I should have started with that. So as usual, we've got um, our sim files, um, and we've got the, 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 the results, um, and the sims are the kind of the input. This, our, our sim files are, sim, are relatively simple compared to the, the last assignment that we worked on. So these, these just represent a page reference stream um, like, for when we do our um, um, page replacement um, algorithms by hand, okay? So this represents, actually the, the first row is just the number of reference. So that's the number of time steps in the simulation. And then after that is um, page number references. So the, at time zero, um, our first page, first reference was to some data on page two. And then we had a reference to something on page three uh, and so on, right? So in, in our simulations, uh, the, the, the size of memory um, is a variable that you can specify, right? So, so we might simulate a memory with four physical frame size, four physical frames as our memory size, or, or five physical frames, or things like that, right? So, so the task is, you know, if we have these references, you have to first determine if it's a hit or a miss, right? So like um, initially in memory, let, let's, let's say, so we normally, like, like we did with our um, examples in class, we usually work with simulating a memory with like four physical frames, for example. So initially, if our memory is empty, we would load page two into a physical frame, and then we would load page three. So these would be go both like misses, right? Because memory is initially empty. And then when we have a reference to two, that should be a hit, all right? So that's what the, um, that's what the, um, is page hit is supposed to be doing, right? Determining whether it's a miss or a hit, right? So two would be a hit, one would be a miss, so we would load that into our third physical frame and then so on. And, and then in this case, since I said we have four physical frames, five would also be a miss, that would get loaded. And then after that, memory would be full. And at that point, um, we would have to start worrying about doing page replacement, right? So, so is page hit, um, just performs the hit, the just performs the determination of whether it's a miss or a hit. And then the final, the do page replacement, um, basically this is, this, most of this work has been done for you, but, but this works, this happens in the schemes, okay? So, so um, let me look at this in particular, okay? So basically we're using, um, I talked about this um, in the assignment description here, we're using a design pattern. Um,
uh, if I can find it here. Um, we're, we're using these schemes. So, so uh, in order to allow different page replacement schemes to be plugged in here relatively easily, um, you'll, you'll see that there's other um, files uh, in this is fine assignment, like FIFO page replacement scheme. Um, and uh, what others were there? There was the, uh, uh, the FIFO um, that we had in there. Um, I guess that's it. Um, and, and then you're going to be implementing um, something in the clock page replacement scheme. Okay. So I think I had extra credit to like implement maybe like least recently used page scheme and implement one other one besides FIFO and, and getting the clock page replacement scheme to work. So, um, So, 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 so that's that's kind of the, the the basics in here. So, so let's look at this. Um, let's, let's first look at the do do page replacement. What you're given on this assignment um, in the paging system class. Okay. So let me just search for that. Um, So this function is called do page placement. Um, oh, we don't have that initially um, for you. Let me check this. Uh, yeah, we do. I don't know why my search wasn't working there, but um, anyway. Um, um, yeah, actually, you do have to implement the do page placement. So uh, um, uh, while I'm thinking about it, you know, so there's a difference between the initial placement and a replacement, right? So um, the initial placement um, conceptually is easy, okay? So initially, when memory is empty, you're not, you don't have to replace anything. So you don't have to select a page to be kicked out. You just um, what we're just using, uh, if, if there's anything that's empty, um, that you can just place a, a reference to a page into an empty frame, okay? And since we're using a simple simulation here, we just use a simple round robin initial for, for placement, um, okay? So, so we don't worry about a, a page being kicked out for any other reason than it being replaced here. So initially when memory is empty, we, we first place it the, the, the first new page in frame zero, and then the next one frame one until all of the frames for our simulated memory are full. And then after that, we have no more just placements to do and we do replacements, okay? Um, so like I said, the, the do page replacement, um, I believe is basically already uh, done for you. Um, so we call a function called make replacement decision. And um, all make replacement decision does is it calls the make replacement decision on a scheme, okay? And this is how we're, we're loading in different schemes, okay? So this can be any class that implements the API for one of these page replacement schemes, um, you know. And we've already implemented the FIFO page Page, page replacement uh, scheme for you, okay? So um, by default, uh, you know, if we specify that we want to do FIFO page replacement, there'll be an instance of a FIFO page replacement scheme um, created and used for you already, okay? So you can see that function if you open up your FIFO page replacement schemes. So you can look at the API if you look at these. Um, so in general, for to be a page replacement scheme, you have to implement uh, these methods. Um, oh, this this is the abstract class. Okay, so so um, so I didn't mention this. So it, to, to implement like uh, FIFO or clock page replacement, we have to use inheritance. So this is an example of object oriented programming that we're doing uh, in this in assignment. Um, and these are all what are known as virtual methods. So these these just represent an API. Um, so, so these are the, the methods that have to be implemented for something to be a page replacement scheme. 
you have to be able to reset the scheme. So this is so you can start a new simulation. Um, you have to simulate a page hit. Well, you have, you have to, to do something if there's a page hit. Um, and there's this get scheme status method that we can look at. And then there's this make replacement decision, which is what, what we were looking at uh, right there at that moment. All right. And if you look at this abstract base class, I mean, there's no implementation for those. Um, there's a, a constructor, but nothing else really, and, and a destructor. Okay. So let's look at a concrete class like the um, FIFO page replacement scheme. So the FIFO page replacement scheme, you'll notice it uses public inheritance of this of the abstract base class, the page replacement scheme. And it just implements those. It actually overrides the constructor and then implements um, those virtual methods. Okay. I probably won't talk about the rest of these. Um, Although you might have to make a, a small change. Well, when, when you, if you, if you want to do the extra credit, like implement least recently use, you'll have to implement all these as well. And, and some of these will be pretty much the same as FIFO or CLOCK. Um, if, if you look at these, um, the, the, the one that would be most different is the make replacement decision. So the main difference between any page replacement scheme is the make replacement decision. Although you might do something slightly different on like a page hit depending on um, how you implement it, okay? Um, so like for FIFO, the only thing you need to keep track of is the frame pointer. So that's the, the next frame because you're, you're doing replacement on a first in, first out, or, or basically treating the, the buffer as a circular buffer. So for FIFO, you just um, um, start at frame zero. Um, and then, so if you have to make a replacement decision, you decide, to kick out frame zero. And then the next time you're asked to make a replacement decision, you need to kick out frame one. And then you need to wrap around. So you have to have some way of knowing how many frames of memory you have. And that's kind of where the, the paging system um, system object comes in, OK? So let, let's look at our um, FIFO page replacement, um, the implementation. So you know you. Um, you, your constructor is simply to um, um, actually we we reuse the um, the, the base class's constructor, um, uh, and then we call reset scheme. So our 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 constructor is basically to set the frame pointer to zero, so that when we we start making page replacement decisions, we start with frame zero to kick out. Um, and, and, and yeah, for FIFO, you don't really have to do anything for a uh, page hit. Right? Um, you need to implement these for the system test, all right? And I'm going to kind of leave that as, um, as an exercise for you if you want to work on the extra credit. So you have to kind of read that code and, and do something similar for your own um, page replacement scheme that you're trying to implement. Okay? So let's look at the replacement decision. So like I already mentioned, there's a hook then in our paging system um, that will end up calling the make replacement decision. Right. So for FIFO, it's, it's pretty simple. So you're just going to return that frame to replace, or the implementation that I gave you, it returns the frame to replace. Um, and it, it um, uh, which is going to be whatever the current frame pointer is, right? And then it increments that, but then it, it does that modulus. So it, it treats memory as a circular buffer. We have to have the system in order to get the memory size because we don't, uh, within these page replacement decisions, we don't really know, we don't keep track of like the memory size and other things. That's, that's part of the paging system simulator. But we can ask the system that we're making page replacement decisions for that information, like to get the memory size. Um, and then use that to correctly wrap around back to frame zero um, um, once we've you know wrapped around that. All right. Um, so that's the basics of our of, of our FIFO page replacement decision. So to implement the clock page replacement decision, um, again, I've basically given you everything, but you just have to implement the make replacement decision for the clock. Uh, page replacement scheme. 
um, helper um, class here. Um, so I should have given you um, I, I mean, I have left it up to you. You have to figure out how to implement this on your own. So you might have to implement things in here, um, depending on how you decide to implement it. Um, so yeah, I mean, so Amara said so you will have to actually implement a little bit on the page hits. Um, so the, the main reason why you need, so we didn't have to do anything for FIFO. But for the clock page replacement, if there's a hit, um, you need to keep track of, of a use bit, okay? So, so anytime there's a hit on a page, if, if you read about the clock page replacement uh, from, for this week, you know, and if you did your problem sets for this week, um, we keep track of what's known as a use bit, right? Um, and we use that for our um, replacement um, decision or we can use that for our replacement decision, right? Um, because things that have been recently used, we, we wanna skip over those uh, because if they've been recently used in the past, we might need to reuse them pretty soon in, uh, in, in the future as well. So, so we avoid trying to kick out things that have been used recently and that's kind of where the use bit is. So you have to keep track of, so for every frame of memory, you also have to keep track of a use bit. The use bit should all, stay at, at uh, should all be initialized to zero, right? So you could just use, for example, uh, uh, just a plain array, a plain C array of, of Boolean values or of integers with all those, all the use bits set to false if there were Booleans are all set to zero. Or you could use some, some standard template library type. Um, so a vector or something of Booleans, whatever, uh, whatever you find easiest. But yeah, in this case, given a frame number, you would have to set, make certain that that use bit is set to one. Um, and then finally, then to make your page replacement decision, you're going to have to implement the algorithm um, that's shown in our textbook. So you have to do the scanning, right? So this will be more complicated than the FIFO um, make replacement decision that I have up here. Um, let me pull that back up, put that back over here so I can remind you of the make uh, replacement decision. But although that um, um, could be used as a starting point, right? But, but the main difference is you just can't use the next frame. You have, you have to scan, right? So basically, um, uh, but you do have to keep a frame pointer. So you can keep the same frame pointer, but, um, you start, and, and if the frame that you're pointing to has the use bit set to one, you're not going to return it. You're, you're instead going to flip its use bit to zero and go to the next one, making certain that, you know, uh, you have to, you know, again, keep treating the buffer as a circular buffer, you know. So in, when you increment to the next one, that means that if you're past what the memory size is, you got to wrap around back to frame pointer zero. Okay. So you keep doing that till you find a frame with a use bit of zero. And, and you know, every time when you look at one when its use bit is one, you first flip it to zero and then check the next one, right? So that's guaranteed if, if all the use bits are one, you'll end up flipping all of your use bits to zero and wrapping back around. And then you'll, you'll find, uh, you'll be guaranteed after one pass to find some frame whose use bit is zero. So it's a little bit more complicated than, than your make replacement decision. So you'll need a loop in there, but it's not too much more complicated. And uh, you do need a lot of the same stuff because you are, for the clock page replacement, you are treating the buffer as, as a circular buffer, as a first in, first out um, um, kind of thing here when you're doing your scan. Um, but um, uh, um, you're, you're just not taking what, what the next frame is. You, you're first trying to find one whose use bit is zero. And the first one you find whose use bit is zero, that's the one you should turn as the frame to replace, okay? So that, that's kind of the, um, um, the most important parts of, of the clock page, page replacement um, um, algorithm there, right? Okay? So that, that's really what you, you're doing for, for the final one. So, so in this assignment, you're, you're changing things in two 
um, location. So, so you're doing your initial stuff in the, the paging system functions to get um, uh, those working. And then after that, you need to implement actually more than one function in the clock page replacement. So you have to get the make replacement decision working. And, and depending on how you implement that, you might have to change some of these other functions as well. I mean, I'll definitely say you probably definitely have to um, put some coding here for the page hit because when a hit when, when a page is hit, you definitely have to change your use bits. So however you're representing your use bits, you have to set the use bit for that frame to one or, or true when it gets hit. So. So yeah, to, to pull it all together, then you'll also have to implement some of these the, this get scheme status correctly because those are being checked in the um, um, uh, in the system tests that it outputs the correct status for um, your different page replacement schemes that get tested. So. And then finally, like I said, there's some extra credit opportunity. I probably won't give much more hints than what you can read in the um, um, in the description here, but but if, if you understand that and 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 um, um, kind of um, like doing object oriented programming and stuff, you can get some extra practice and some extra credit. So you know you could take you 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 would have to take like the FIFO or or your working clock page replacement as sort of a starting point. Uh, but but if you copied that class and then created a, a new class like LRU. Um, page replacement scheme and then implemented an LRU page replacement decision in there. Um, that would uh, that would work. So you can implement LRU um, or optimal. So either one or both. So for up to uh, 10 points. So. All right, so that's basically all I want to kind of say here. Say today here, you still got you know week, the, the week and a half at this point for working on the assignment for. Um, we can talk about this some more, um, you know, um, on Wednesday. Although I might not say any more about this unless I do get some questions, some 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 students joining and asking some specific questions for some help on some particular topics. Okay, but anyway, so hopefully that was um, um, helpful. Um, and um, as usual, keep your questions coming. You know, feel free to email me or to join these help sessions if, if, if you have a specific question and you'd like to maybe get some face-to-face -face kinds of discussion about it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's it. And um, I will see you then uh, in our next videos.